Hello and welcome to GastroVision. I am Dr. Kazi Sohail from Government Medical College, Srinagar. Today we will look closely at the segmental ducts of the liver as visualized on endoscopic ultrasound. Before we go into the image, let's see the orientation. Structures at the caudal end of the transducer appear on the left side of EUS image. Structures at the cranial end of the transducer appear on the right side of the EUS image. And as we rotate the scope clockwise, new structures start appearing from the right side of acoustic field, which corresponds to the right side of the displayed image. Keeping these principles in mind, let's analyze the sequential EUS images. Let's carefully analyze first image in neutral position. Here we can see the dilated ducts of segment second and segment three. Segment 3 duct is displayed on the left side of EUS image because it lies in the acoustic field of the distal end of the probe. Structures closer to the cardinal end are always projected to the left side of EUS image. Segment 2 duct appears to the right of segment 3. This is because segment 2 is anatomically placed more superiorly in the liver and thus it falls in the cranial acoustic field of transducer, which is represented on the right side of the EUS image. In the lower field of the image, we also identify the diaphragm. It is seen deeper because it is farther away from the transducer compared to the intrahepatic ducts. So, in this first frame, the ducts of segment 2 and 3 are both visible but separated with segment 3 caudal left and segment 2 cranial right, and the diaphragm forming the deeper boundary. On clockwise rotation, the ducts of segment 2 and 3 fuse together, forming left hepatic duct. Just posterior to the fused ducts, we see umbilical segment of left portal vein. This is expected because the probe is located in the esophagus and in this position the acoustic field travels from posterior to anterior. Therefore, structures that are anterior in the body are displayed in the inferior part of the EUS image, while posterior structures are closer to the top. Because of this orientation, the left portal vein appears closer to the probe than the left hepatic duct even though anatomically it lies posterior to it. The left hepatic vein is another key landmark here. It is seen coursing from 2 o'clock position to the 7 o'clock position across the image. This trajectory means the left hepatic vein is running superior to inferior and posterior to anterior through the acoustic plane. So, at this stage, we are visualizing the union of segment second and segment third ducts in front of left portal vein, with the left hepatic vein providing an oblique vascular reference across the image. On further clockwise rotation, the new structures come into view from the right side of EUS image. The caudate lobe, that segment one, now appears closest to the probe and therefore is displayed in the superior, that is near field, part of the image. In this orientation, you can clearly see two segments of portal vein. The first segment runs from the left side of the image towards the right, showing its direction from inferior to superior. Just anterior to the caudate lobe, the portal vein appears as if it is going vertically away from the probe. On endoscopic ultrasound, moving away from the probe is displayed left to right, which gives the appearance of transverse segment of left portal vein. In front of this transverse left portal vein, the fused ducts of segment second and third are now joined by segment four duct, entering from the cranial aspect. At this stage, we have assembled the full left hepatic ductal confluence the union of segments 2, 3, and 4 ducts lying just anterior to the transverse left portal vein, with segment 1 sitting closest to the probe. On further clockwise rotation, the right portal vein is now seen joining the left portal vein. This marks 
the transition point from the left hepatic system to the right hepatic system. The liver segment line just below the plane of right portal vein corresponds to segment 5. Since segment 5 is an inferior segment, it is located away from the probe. On endoscopic ultrasound at this position, structures away from the probe are displayed in the inferior part of the image. Additionally, because segment 5 lies in the field of the caudal end of the transducer, it is projected towards the left side of EUS image. Thus, in this image, we see the right portal vein joining left portal vein as a key hyalur landmark. And just inferior to this plane in the caudal field lies segment 5 of the liver. To conclude, let's put everything together. On initial imaging, we identified segment 2 and 3 ducts separately, with segment 3 appearing on the left of image in the caudal field and segment 2 on the right side in the cranial field. On clockwise rotation, these ducts fuse to form left hepatic ducts lying just anterior to the umbilical segment of left portal vein, with the left hepatic vein running obliquely across the image as a key orientation landmark. On further rotation, the segment 4 duct joined the fused 2-3 ducts from the cranial side, right in front of the transverse part of left portal vein. The caudate lobe was closest to the probe, reinforcing its posterior position. Finally, on continued rotation, the right portal vein came into view, joining left portal vein. The segment 5, being inferior and away from the probe, appeared in the inferior part of the image, but shifted to the left side, since it lies in the caudal acoustic field of the transducer. This understanding is essential for evaluating hyalur lesions, guiding targeted drainage, and interpreting complex liver and not majoring endoscopic ultrasound. Thank you for following this stepwise endoscopic ultrasound tutorial on the segmental ducts of the liver. With practice, these landmarks will become intuitive, making your diagnostic and therapeutic procedures more precise and effective.